Yeshua, let your kingdom come here, let your will be done here in us. Yeshua, there is no one greater, you alone are Savior. Show the world your love. King of heaven, come down. King of heaven. My message is called Social Distancing from Sin. You know, last week I was on Facebook. I came across this post that really made me think. It was a simple statement, but it stopped me right in my tracks. And the statement post said this. What if we treated sin like it was the coronavirus? And that got me to thinking. You know, I just couldn't get that out of my mind. You know, you ever ever do that with a song where you hear a song in the morning and you can't get it out of your mind? I just can't get it out of my head. (laughs) And now you're going to be thinking about that one. But I was thinking about that. What if we treated sin like it was the coronavirus? And that's the way this statement was for me. It kept coming. So it kept rattling around in my head. So what I did was I thought I'd try to give you a message this Shabbat with the thoughts that I have from this statement that Adonai has brought to my mind this past week. What if we treated sin in our lives like it was the coronavirus, like we treat the coronavirus? Now, we know that the coronavirus, COVID-19, is a serious problem, don't we? We know that it is demonic in its origin. I believe uh, it has a a satanic foundation. We also know it can infect us and it can make us really sick. It has impacted hundreds of thousands of people all over the world. Some people are saying that they've had mild symptoms and others are saying they've had severe symptoms, but many people worldwide are even dying, Uh, lots of them with a compromised immune system. In fact, our daughter, Rebecca, who lives in New York City, she has friends in both cases. She has good friends, Emily and Jonah. They both had a very mild case together, and her boss, his husband, spent 12 days in the ICU. He was a young, healthy guy with two small children. And because of the seriousness of this outbreak, we have all had to do some pretty extraordinary things to prevent the spread of this virus. Yes, COVID-19 is a very serious issue, but we have an even more serious issue that we all need to address. We call it sin. And we all know that sin is a big problem, don't we? Well, we should, right? And we know that sin can come into our lives and wreak havoc and cause spiritual illness. And if we let sin go far enough, it can cause spiritual death. And it can cause us to do things that we know we shouldn't do. And it can keep us from doing the things that we know we should do. So let's go, let's start off with the book of Yaakov. In James chapter 4, verse 17, it tells us, Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. So sin is failing to hit the mark. And sin is when... We deviate from God's law. God's law is like a bullseye on a target. We aim for that bullseye, but we fall short. And not just once or twice, but repeatedly over and over. And I thought about that. You would think that after so many misses, we would recalibrate our aim, and we would aim for the bullseye and be able to hit it every time. But we don't. And whether it's by omission when we don't do what we know is right, or by commission, when we know what we are doing is wrong, sin can happen in our thoughts. They can happen in the words that we speak, like was in our Torah portion today, or in our actions, our deeds. And there's also another word that describes sin. It's called trespass, uh, transgression. This word trespass, it literally means to step across the line. We see signs all the time put up on private property. No trespassing, right? We know what that means. If we step over someone's property line, we have now trespassed on their land. 
It's just like that with sin. The person who steps across, who ignores Adonai's standard of righteousness, has committed a trespass or a transgression. And these days it seems that some people, most people, are pretty much okay with sin. It seems like the morals in our society have numbed themselves with sin. In fact, sin seems to be promoted and celebrated, even encouraged in our world today. You know, we see movies and TV shows all the time where they show sin as being no big deal at all. We see governments passing laws that legalize what Adonai says is sin. But you see, here's the big problem with sin. It's Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. And now because the coronavirus is a serious issue, the world is treating it very seriously. And we've been using extraordinary measures to try to stop its impact or spread on us. Every single person is being encouraged to change their normal way of doing things. Life has been changed dramatically all over the world in response to this disease. But here's a thought. What if we all got as serious about sin in our lives as we have lately about the coronavirus? What if we treated sin like it was the coronavirus? How would our lives change? Let's look at how we're all responding to this coronavirus and how Adonai wants us to make those same responses to sin. The first thing that I see here is we are separating ourselves. And since the first cases were identified, uh, we have been, we've seen that one of the first responses to coronavirus outbreak is to separate ourselves by six feet. We've all become familiar with a new word in the last few weeks. What's it called? Social distancing, right? And since this virus is spread through contact with someone who is infected, and we have tried to distance ourselves from the possibility of coming into contact with it. So we've been told to stay in our homes, not to make any unnecessary trips, only essential ones, so we don't come in contact with the virus or spread it to others. And we've been told to keep our distance from people, to decrease the possibility that we will come in contact with this virus. And with our problem of sin, the way we got in trouble is that we distance ourselves all right, but we distance ourselves from Adonai. It wasn't God who was moved. We are the ones who socially distance ourselves from Adonai himself and from his mandate. In Tahilim, in the book of Psalm 66, verse 20, it says, Blessed be God, who has not turned away my prayer nor his loving kindness from me. God didn't move. But we moved away from Adonai's direction. We moved away from then his protection also. And we see lots of examples throughout the Bible. What happens to people when they ignore Adonai's instruction? Even Adonai's chosen people themselves, the Israelites, when they ignored Adonai's directions, they got themselves in trouble and bondage and persecution. Yeshayahu, or the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 2, says, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. And Mishpacha, we still see it today. Ignoring Adonai, distancing ourselves from God will allow sin to take over in our lives. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12, Take care, brethren. That there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. That's a really big problem today. We have distanced ourselves from Adonai. And the world and its fleshly desires, we have distanced ourselves from our first love, Adonai, the Most High. Yaakov, James chapter 4, verse 7, Submit therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. How do you resist the devil? By ne drawing near to God. You're not going to do it on your own. Amen. If Yaakov was with us today, he would be speaking these exact same words to us. But what if we treated sin the same way we are responding to this coronavirus? 
What if instead of distancing ourselves from Adonai, we drew nearer to him instead, and we distanced ourselves from sin at least six feet away, a mile if you can, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. What if we distance ourselves from the people who tempt us to do wrong? What if we distance ourselves from the people who hang out at the bars and nightclubs and get drunk all the time? And what if we distance ourselves from the bad business deals? And what if we distance ourselves from the people who lie and who cheat and who steal and gossip? What if we ourselves distance ourselves from those things? Do you think our world would be a lot less stressful? To Halim in the book of Psalms, Chapter 1, verse 1. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. In other words, blessed is the one who distances himself from sin. That word blessed can also be translated as happy. One of the things people say they want most in life is they want to be happy. They want happiness. And Adonai gives us an exact formula for happiness. Those who distance themselves from sin will be happier and will be blessed. So what if we really did treat sin like we do this coronavirus? What if we distance ourselves from sin? And here's something else that we're doing a lot of lately. The second thing, washing our hands. Some of you, I could look right now, you got the cleanest hands I ever seen in my life. You know, it's funny how by this time we should be riding around in rocket ships and stuff like that, but we're just learning how to wash our hands properly. <laughs> in our response to COVID-19, the specialists are telling us that we need to constantly wash our hands. They tell us the same thing every flu season, and it is true. Washing our hands helps to decrease germs and infection. And you see, when we touch a surface that has a virus on it, the virus can stick to our skin in almost a glue-like way. Uh, I heard it described like a Velcro bond. And now rinsing with water might get rid of some of the virus, but washing with soap thoroughly for at least 20 seconds not only loosens the glue between the virus and the skin, but it also gets rid of the proteins, the lipids, and the RNA in the virus altogether. So with soap, you aren't just washing the virus down the drain. You're actually demolishing the virus like a demolition team that's bringing down a building brick by brick. Cleansing our hands is one way that we can prevent the spread of the virus. What if we did that with sin? You know, what if we washed our hands of the unrighteousness and the filthiness of the sin virus? In James chapter 4, verse 8, he says, Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts you double-minded. And all through the Torah, we see the rituals of cleansing for people who had contagious diseases. It was all about uh, uh, the Torah portion today. You know, listen to the instructions that Adonai gave to Moshe from our Torah portion today. In Vayakra, Leviticus chapter 14, verse 8 through 9, the one to be cleansed shall then wash his clothes and shave off all his hair and bathe in water and be clean. And now afterwards he may enter the camp, but he shall stay outside his tent for seven days. It will be on the seventh day that he shall shave off all his hair. He shall shave his head and his beard and his eyebrows, even all his hair. He shall then wash his clothes and bathe his body in water and be clean. Wow. You know, the children of Israel, they went through some pretty elaborate steps to get rid of disease and to cleanse themselves, even back then. What if we really worked hard also to cleanse ourselves of sin? What if we tried to remove sin from our own lives? Now, there is a way to do that. It's called repentance. Say that with me. Repentance. To be sorry for our sins, to change our ways, it's a turning away 180 from sin and turning back to God. What if we cleansed our mouths of all the cursing and coarse language and fall language that we use? What if we cleansed our eyes 
from the lustful looks and the offensive movies and the internet trappings? What if we cleansed our hearts from envying what other people have instead of being satisfied with what Adonai has blessed us with? And what if we cleanse our hearts and our minds from impure and evil thoughts? What if we removed hate? What if we removed anger and unforgiveness? The list could go on and on and on. What do you need the Lord to cleanse you from today? Just what if? You know that Adonai, that's what he expects us to do. Let's take a look. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14 and 16, he says, As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in your behavior, because it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. What if we really cleansed ourselves? What if we really repented and turned? What response do you think we would receive from Adonai? Check this out then. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Therefore, come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean, and I will welcome you. He will welcome us. Hallelujah. Do not touch what is unclean. And now my wife Eileen's favorite verse, Philippians 4, verse 8 and 9. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and anything worthy of praise, then dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me Practice these things, and the God of peace, shalom, will be with you. Hallelujah. You know, I believe, and the Bible backs me up on this, that if we really, really make an effort to remove the sin in our lives, we would all see a change in this world that we couldn't even imagine. I mean, we've got global people now trying to combat this virus. What if we globally tried to combat the sin? A great and mighty harvest is awaiting us. I believe if we tried as hard to cleanse ourselves from sin as we are working at cleansing ourselves from this virus, that Adonai would bless us more than we could ever contain. But it seems that no matter how hard we try to do what is right, we keep, keep slipping up, right? We fall short. And that is true for what we are all doing to eliminate the coronavirus. No matter how hard we are trying, people are still becoming infected. So we practice social distancing. We wash our hands repeatedly. And what else? The third thing, we're all wearing a mask. You know, we're all told it's mandatory you know, to wear a mask in public to protect ourselves from spreading this virus just in case we ourselves have it. It's been proven to be helpful, but Will it ever end? And when? You know, what and who are we to believe nowadays? How do we know if anyone is telling the truth? Does anyone really know the real truth but Adonai himself? Many doctors are transcribing, building up our immune system to ward off this avenging bug. Uh, Dr. Hodish here and uh, Dr. Dave, they have, uh, they have presented... Uh, a way that you can build up your immune system, you can go to TAKlife.org and look it up. I believe it's called TAK Talks with the Docs, right? And it is excellent. It's about 20, 25 minutes about how we can take the offensive and build up our immune system. Myself, I, I'm listening to them and many other doctors. I take vitamin C, 5,000 milligrams a day. So does my wife, vitamin D3, 5,000 milligrams a day, zinc, between 75 to 100 milligrams a day, quinine water, Schweppes tonic water if you can't find it. You know, try to get some sun, try to exercise, eat the right foods. I'll say that again, eat the right foods. You know, we're sitting in our homes quarantined, and those Dorito packages look good. And now at Costco, they sell big bags like this. You know, I just want to tell you, eat the right foods, vegetables and things. You know, we could be healthier. We could come out of this even healthier than before if we do it right, if we take the offensive. 
You know, I am going on the offensive. Why? Because I find this virus to be very offensive. Who do we believe nowadays? You know, sometimes just because people have a title, whether it be mayor or doctor or whatever it is, does that mean they are not hiding other agendas behind their own masks? You know, the word of Adonai says that in these days there will be many wolves in sheep's clothing. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 and 15 says this. No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. And how about us? We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We need to take off the sin mask that we've been hiding behind, and we need to come out from her. Proverbs 26, verse 24 and 28. Whoever hates disguises himself with his lips and harbors deceit in his heart. And when he speaks graciously, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. And though his hatred be covered with deception, his wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and a stone will come back on him who starts it rolling. A lying tongue hates its victims, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Listen, if we are to wear any mask at all nowadays, we should desire to put on the mask of Yeshua himself, to be conformed to his image and likeness. So let's all take off the mask of sin in our lives that many of us are hiding behind and come out from its dark closet out into the incredible and marvelous light of Yeshua. He said, let your light so shine, do not hide it under a bushel. Amen. Matthew in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Can I hear a hallelujah? Are you with me on this? Well, there's just one more thing then. Seeking medicines for treatment. With over 100,000 people sick in the U.S. alone, there is a huge effort to find a cure for this. Researchers are frantically trying to find medicines that will work against this virus. They are testing antiviral medications that we already have to see if they work against COVID-19. And they are looking at the blood of people who have had the disease and were healed from it to try to find antibodies that will fight this virus. And they are searching for vaccines to prevent this disease. But we need a fail-proof medicine that will work against this virus. And you know, we all need a fail-proof medicine for the spiritual disease of sin in this world, too. Many people will get the coronavirus. Hundreds and thousands of people around the world already have. But the infection rate for sin is astronomical. In fact, it's 100%. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All, each one of us. And that's why Adonai had to send his son, a savior, to redeem us. But the thing is, like, unlike the coronavirus, we already have a vaccine for the sin. Adonai provided an antidote. He gave his one and only son to die on the tree of sacrifice for our salvation, for our redemption. And while we were desperately trying to find a way to be forgiven of our sins or to be covered year after year and failing miserably, Adonai provided the sacrifice just like he did with Abraham. Adonai himself, my son, will provide the sacrifice. And he certainly did in Yeshua. Romans 5 verse 6 says, For while we were still helpless, at the right time, Yeshua died for the ungodly. While we were still sinners, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. You know, sometimes you find it hard to forgive others. Think, how hard was it for Yeshua at the time, hanging on the tree to say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Galatians 1, verse 3 and 4 says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Messiah Yeshua who gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from this present evil age according to the will of God and Father. 
Yeshua died to provide the only fail-proof effective treatment for our sin disease. First Kepha and Peter 3, verse 18. For Yeshua also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. And here is the promise that Adonai gives to us in 1 John, Yochanan 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Yeshua, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Can I hear a hallelujah? We're cleansed from sin. You know, I look forward to the time when we're all going to be able to meet back together in here. There's a big echo in here right now. I look forward to the time when you can all come. You know, sometimes you never really realize and, and cherish what you have until it's lost. Right? There's a song about that. You never know what you got till it's gone. But we miss you all so much. And I'm sure you miss us too. But have we learned our lesson yet? We're still in time out, right? The Lord put us in there. It's, he, he didn't allow this to happen for not a reason. And are we opening up our Bibles? Are we praying together? Are we turning from sin? Are we taking care of our sin like we are the coronavirus? You know, I think the first Shabbat that we get back together in this building is going to be bonkers. It's RSVP only. <laughs> we don't know what we're going to have to do, maybe social distancing in some of the chairs, but you're going to have to call and get a space because I know that you're all missing it so much. You know, we see now what is important, right? Maybe if it's raining, you don't go to Shabbat or whatever. Not no more. Not no more. It's time. It's revival time. You know, I'm looking forward to it so much. I pray that it will be within the next month or so who knows? We'll see. But even while we are separated by distance, we are not separated by God's Ruach, by his Holy Spirit, and by his incredible love. And because of God's love, we can fellowship together, even as we are doing now, as children of Adonai, even while we are having to shelter in place. Hallelujah. And we can thank Adonai that we are being cleansed right now of the sins that we commit and the sins that we have committed. Because of the shed blood of Yeshua, the Seha Elohim, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Listen, we all want to present ourselves before the Lord as the bridegroom comes back for his bride. As the Chatan, the bridegroom, comes back for us, the Chala, his bride. Which is very soon. I'm telling you, it's coming sooner than we know. As in all earth glory, we want to present ourselves having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless before the Lord. Lord, let that be me. Say that with me. Lord, let that be me. Let me get my wedding gown ready right now, Lord, that I might be found without spot or wrinkle at your return, that praise may be continually on my lips no matter what I'm going through, Lord. Listen, a few last points to remember. Make sure you test positive for faith. Keep your distance from doubt. Isolate and quarantine yourself from fear. And trust Adonai in all things to lead you and guide you. During the days ahead, we are going to be led and need to be led by the Ruach HaKodesh, by the Holy Spirit himself. And the only way you're going to do that is to get into your Bible and to read it and get to know God and get to hear his voice, his batol, that still small voice, because it is him who is going to tell you the truth. It is this book, the absolute truth, that will lead you and guide you in all of your ways. We all need to be ready because the king is coming, and he's coming very soon. Amen? So I thought, you know, I would just like to say a prayer. I'd like to finish with a prayer every service now, because it is harvest time, and because we have so many people watching around the world, that we can rededicate our lives if we are believers in Messiah. But if sin has been hampering our life, maybe there's a recurring sin that you're going through. Maybe there's something that you just can't get a hold of. But if you can treat sin in your life 
as, as much as you're giving attention to this coronavirus, then God will truly bless you. Or maybe you've never accepted Yeshua, Jesus, as your personal Lord and Savior. And to know that not only to get to heaven, but to walk out with the power of his incredible love and forgiveness in this life and to have the Holy Spirit in you, you need that. Well, then today is the day of salvation. doesn't say anything about tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow may bring, but we know that today is a day of salvation. So if you could all just say your, this prayer with me. Lord God, I am a sinner, and I don't want to sin anymore. I need your help. Please forgive me of my sin. They are many. I know that Yeshua died for me. And he rose again on the third day. And he said, I will send the comforter that he will be with you all of your days. Lord, I need that Holy Spirit in my life. Send me the comforter. I believe in you. I will follow for you, Lord. I will turn from my sin, Lord. Be my savior. Be my everything. I love you, Lord. Amen, amen. Listen, whether you said that for the first time or rededicated your life and are really going to do something about this sin, you know what? Put on the mask of Yeshua. Social distance yourself. Keep six feet away. Sin, get thee behind me, right? Draw close to the Lord and he'll draw close to you. We have the vaccine. The blood of Yeshua cleanses you from all sin. Hallelujah. And last but not least, separate yourselves from that which is unclean, from the things in your life that come through the portals, through your eyes, through your ears, uh, through your mouth. Separate yourself from the things that make you unclean and cleanse yourselves, and the Lord will give you happiness like you've never seen before. You know, we need revival, and we're starting to see it all over the place. We're having thousands and thousands of people watching us now when we only had two to 300. You know, it's a challenge and a time for all of us to reach out, not to fall back, to take the offensive and not be on the defensive because the Lord has got a mighty plan and you're in it. May the Lord bless you and keep you all of your days. I want to finish with the Aaronic benediction, which is the Berkat Kohanim. Okay, and I want to pronounce that over you, so if you will just stand where you are and just raise your hands up to heaven. This is a blessing, the Aaronic benediction or the priestly blessing that the Lord told Moses. Moses, tell your brother Aharon, the first Kohen Gadol, high priest, and his sons who would follow him afterwards, the Kohanim, tell them this is how you are to bless the children of Israel. Yivarechecha Adonai Vayishmarecha Ya'er Adonai Panavalecha Vichunecha Yisa Adonai Panavalecha Yisem Lecha The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, our Sar Shalom, our Prince of Peace, and to accept this blessing, all you have to say is, Amen. Yeshua, let your kingdom come.